ed page because we have a, um, a handful of more sessions coming up. But today we are here to talk about the FAQs for PowerSchool and other digital learning platforms that our students are utilizing during this remote learning time. We have Tamika Woodard, our Middle School Director of Studies, Joe Hernick, our Director of Education Technology, and our entire EdTech team is with us as well on chat to answer our questions and go through some of the different tools that our students are using. So as everybody is joining in, please let us know that you're here. Again, these are conversations with Country Day, so we want to know that you're here and let us know the division you're a part of, your role at the school, maybe your students' grades. Um, and as we kind of continue the conversation, please feel free to write your question and our um, ed tech team of Tim, Nikki, and Donna are with us live on chat. So say hello, everybody. So to give you a sense of um, what today, the kind of format for today, is, is we're gonna start out, Tamika and Joe are gonna give kind of a big picture of the role of these tools for teaching and learning during this time. And then we're gonna dig in um, for lower school, middle school, and upper school. So Tim will share about five minutes, and then Nikki, and followed by Donna. So if you're an upper school and looking for some information, stick with it, um, and Donna will be at the end of it. But we'll start out with um, Tim in lower school. And again, ask any of the questions and please know that if you are watching this later um, and not live, you can always go to our remote learning and our coronavirus preparedness website. And there's a ask a question button and that direct, you can ask us any questions and we'll direct you to where you need to be. Um, we're here, we're in this together. So please, um, please know, don't, no question is, um, is too much. So we'll get started with Joe and Tamika. Tamika Woodard, as I said, our Director of Studies in Middle School. I think this is her 10th or 11th year. Um, she is also a middle school and upper school parent. So she has that unique and really valuable perspective of those two, role, the two roles. So Tamika, to get us started, do you wanna share with us kind of that overall perspective, like I said, on how parents can support students to make the most of remote learning? Hi, well, thank you so much, Shannon. Hi, everyone, I'm so excited um, anytime during this period to be able to connect with you and Joe and anyone in our Country Day community. Um, when I think about remote learning, the very first thing I think about is patience and understanding. Um, understanding that this, uh, this came across so quickly for our teachers, parents, and students understanding that no one expected to be in a pandemic situation at the beginning of the school year, understanding that the use of technology is the main connection between students and um, teachers, and then also understanding um, that middle school teachers and all of Country Day's teachers absolutely love and miss their students and can't wait to see them again. So. Um, you know, when I, I consider my overall um, philosophy and when I reflect on what we're actually exper experiencing right now, that's um, especially what I think about. Um, you know, lower school gave my children a strong organizational platform. So when they are experiencing this remote learning situation, um, I can tell that they're very organized and, um, you know, they're definitely working. Uh, in middle school, our teachers, when they began working with iPads several years ago, um, they definitely learned a lot about technology. So um, even when we began and we began working so quickly with remote learning, I knew that our teachers um, would be prepared, especially with technology. Um, we certainly had work to do work uh, working remotely, but I knew that our teachers knew a lot about uh, technology because they were already working with iPads and, um, you know, working from school. So um, I felt very comfortable with that. One thing that um, as far as parents helping their students from home, one um, technique or one thing that I, I would suggest that parents do 
um, is kind of follow what our advisors are doing. So on Mondays, our advisors um, look through the week with their advisees, with our students, and they kind of give them an overview of what's coming up for the week. All of our teachers on their teams, they work together and they create a workload document and they talk about what's coming up. They share with each other what's coming up for the week. And so advisors will talk to their students about that on Mondays and just give them a broad overview. I actually think this is um, just a great life lesson to teach students to think about what's coming up and to prepare for it. So once students get that kind of overview, then um, parents can sit at home with their uh, children in the evenings and talk about, you know, what's coming up for the week? What do you have going on? And um, that will help their, their children with what's going on remotely. That's great. I do think the planning, um, even from a working from home perspective, planning it all out and being prepared for the day and the week is great advice, not only for students, but for us adults as well. So Joe is our Director of Educational Technology, and it's, he's truly been a partner. Joe, I've been so appreciative of our partnership throughout this transition. Watching you and your entire team get our faculty and students ready for this in such a quick way has really been amazing. So just thank you for from you know, my team and from the whole community for everything you guys are doing and continue to do to keep us ready and um, serving our students in the best way. I know there's a lot that took place in terms of making the decision of what our remote learning plan and what kind of tools we were gonna use. Can you share with us a little bit how those decisions were made and why you chose what you did? Sure, I can talk about that from a high level. And I can tell everybody that in our next session that Scott and I are doing next week, Scott Wainwright, assistant head, and I are gonna be doing, we'll go a little bit more deeply into the philosophy and the decision-making process. But from a really high level, we wanted to leverage the tools that students and teachers were already using. And that was super easy for grades five through 12, middle school and upper school students already bring their devices home iPads in the middle school and Surface tablets in the upper school. And all of the tools that we are now using for remote learning, we had used in the classroom, obviously not to the same extent because we're so reliant on the Google tools uh, in middle school and the Office 365 tools in upper school because we don't have that face-to-face -face contact. So working with our faculty to show them how to use those tools they already used in the classroom in a more effective remote manner has been our biggest uh was really our, our biggest channel our big, <clears throat> our biggest challenge mm -hmm. and we were lucky enough to get one day on campus that friday before spring break uh, before we when we were planning for what we thought was going to be a two-week outage we queued up all of our faculty we worked one-on-one -on -one with those who requested the most aid we had large group training sessions at all three divisions mm -hmm. and uh tim moxley in the lower school Nikki Dunn in the middle school and Donna Campbell Patrick in the upper school really just rolled up their sleeves and worked with everyone to make sure that they knew what what needed to get done and in that in some regards that was working one on one with teachers to get a specific tool tied into their classroom work but we'll take a look at what Tim Nikki and Donna show us in a little bit yeah, absolutely. I feel so fortunate as a school community to have kind of your all expertise as well as the resource within, you know, the ability to do that professional development. So thank you again. So I think we're going to jump right into Tim's kind of tutorial on PowerSchool. Again, um, please know that Tim's with us. Hi, Tim. And hi, everybody. Christina and um, Catherine and Karen who are here joining us. Um, you know, again, if you have some questions, please, as I pull this up, know that you can just chat, chat away and um, Tim can answer all of them, I'm sure. <laughs> Here we go. So just load up. Hello, fourth grade parents. Uh, my name is Tim Moxley. I'm the, the lower school um, educational technologist. And I just wanted to uh, do a brief video uh, showing you how to navigate uh, our school learning. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the address bar. And we're going to type in uh, the address to get to our school. 
And I have uh, created a tiny URL that will get us there hopefully quickly, which is tinyurl.com for the number four, T-H-G-R-P-S-L, which would mean fourth grade BSL. And I'm going to hit go. And that's going to take us to our login page. Now, we want to only select sign in with Google. I know the, the one on the bottom um, says sign in with your PowerSchool learning account is tempting. Uh, and that looks like the way to go, but uh, we want to go with sign in with Google. I'm going to select that. Now, your child's email address. Your child's email address is their first name, first initial, their first name, followed by their last name, followed by their year of graduation. And the at charlottecountryday.org <coughs> is already filled in. We hit next. Now, their password is capital C, lowercase, D-A-Y. And then they're going to have their own special number that their teacher has given them. I'm going to hit next. All right, and that brings us to your child's um, PowerSchool Learning landing page. Now, you will see on the page, you'll see <clears throat> the weekly agenda, recent activities, announcements. But the, uh, what I really want to draw your attention to is the left side of the page, which contains um, class pages for all of their classes, their uh, regular classroom teacher, as well as their special area classes. Now, you can see at the top of the left-hand column is um, uh, the classroom teacher. You can select that. So that brings us to the classroom teacher's main page. Um, and from here, this is um, their schedules for the day. Um, they do a great job of laying everything out um, in terms of uh, subject, what's required. Um, and over to the left of this page are resources. Um, it should be anything your, your child would need. Um, and this is Power School Learning. Um, if, if you have any questions um, or issues, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to put my email here. And um, like I said, don't uh, don't hesitate to contact me um, if you run into any problems. All right. Uh, take care, and I'll see you on the next one. All right. So that's a little bit about Power School. Um, I'm going to, he had, we have another um, session or a little bit tutorial on Google Classroom. So I'm going to start that out and also know that this will all be on our parent ed and remote learning pages. As this is. Hello, fourth grade parents. This is Mr. Moxley again. I'm um, just doing a short video for uh, Google Classroom. We've addressed PowerSchool Learning and how to log in to PowerSchool, and now we're going to move on to Google Classroom. Um, now, I will tell you, if you haven't noticed already, when accessing Google Classroom, it looks quite different on an iPad or mobile device uh, than it does on a laptop or desktop. Now, um, most of the videos I'll do, especially regarding Google Classroom, will be done from the vantage point of a mobile device and a laptop or desktop. For now, this particular video is going to be done um, on an iPad. Now, if I were to try to access Google Classroom via a browser, like you would on a laptop, if you look over on the uh, top right-hand corner up here of the screen, you'll see a little icon that looks like a waffle. Um, that is where you would go if you were on a laptop. So I would select the waffle, and you see the Google Classroom icon, and that's where it would take you. Now, because I'm on an iPad, I'm going to use the app that is associated with the classroom. So I've gone to the app, downloaded the app. Um, I'm going to go back out to the home screen. Here's the app icon. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to use another account. And I'm going to sign in as the student. Hmm. All right, I'm going to check my spelling. All right. Very good. I did time. Pretty proud of myself. And next. And here we come to the uh, password, which is all this is identical to how you log into PowerSchool. Okay. So I've used the app. I've signed in. Um, now you're going to see the 
classroom that your uh, student is associated with. Um, I'm going to select that. And you're going to see that uh, Google Classroom is broken into three different views. You have the stream view, which is what we're on now. And it basically is what it, uh, what it says. It's just a stream of um, assignments and um, items that have been added to Google Classroom. Uh, there's no real organization to it. If I come over here to classwork, this is where my assignments are. And um, this is uh, it's broken out by subject area. If I go over to people, which is the third view, that just shows the people in my classroom. We will not use this uh, people tab really whatsoever. So I'm going to go back to classwork, and I want to draw your attention up to the right-hand corner to an icon that looks like a little ID badge. I'm going to press that ID badge icon, and what that does, it shows me all of my assignments and whether or not I turned them in, not turned them in, um, uh, you know, whether they've been, uh, I've got comments waiting for me from the teacher, um, all of those sorts of things. So this is a really good view if you're um, uh, not sure if you turned in an assignment. Um, so I'm going to X out of that, and I'm back to my classwork tab. Um, this is where we're going to operate for the most part. And just to um, describe how PowerSchool and Google Classroom work together, PowerSchool is where your student will go every day to get their um, their daily schedule and um, any assignments. Google Classroom is primarily where they will do their assignments and turn them in, if that makes sense. Now, if you guys have any questions or problems, uh, please always feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here's my email. And uh, like I said, I'm always here to help. Uh, and if I don't know the answer, then I will uh, do my best to find an answer and get back to you as soon as I can. All right, guys, take care, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right. So, all right, we got us back on. I noticed, I think the connection may have caused that to be a little blurry. I uh, just wanted you to know each of those videos will also be posted on our remote learning page after this session. If you wanted to just go into um, Tim's and not watch this full thing, um, you know, we're all kind of dealing with the the all the internet stuff going on in the world so thanks for your patience um joe do you want to share kind of uh if you wanted one thing for pa lower school parents to kind of hang on to relevant to those two tools um what would that be i'm, I'm going to give two uh, remember that what we were looking at from tim's perspective and what we'll look at from nikki and donna's is the student view that's to get your student online for any parent to kind of look over the shoulder in power school, they always go through BucksNet. And if you have more than one child at Country Day, like Tamika and I do, all of your children's, multiple children's assignments will show up on that one power school page. And we show how to filter your children. So if I've got a middle schooler and an upper schooler, I can look at just the upper schoolers assignments or just the middle schoolers. That's probably the biggest takeaway that a lot of parents uh, either don't know or have forgotten about. So when they click through BucksNet to get to power school, they can then choose if they wanna see all the assignments or just the assignments from one child. And really, uh, to reiterate, Google Classroom allows our kids at home to get that classroom content, get lectures from their teachers, get those course materials, plus it's two ways. So that if a student does a paper in Google Docs, their teacher can write feedback and it's, a, it's almost as good as being in the classroom. Yeah, almost as good. Everything will, almost, will always be almost as good. <laughs> we miss that connection so much. Um, so we're going to head over to the middle school. Uh, we've got Nikki put together um, a good video of the wealth of information that they have. Cool cats and kittens. Nikki Dunn, middle school educational technologist here at Country Day. I wanted to take some time to discuss a few of the apps and programs that you will most frequently see your students use during this remote learning process. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Let's start with PowerSchool Learning. PowerSchool Learning is the main tool that we have decided to use to make sure that parents are able to stay on top of their student work. Through PowerSchool Learning, you'll be able to see what work is assigned for which class. Also, some teachers choose to post material on PowerSchool Learning as well. This way, parents can check in quickly to see where their students are, Sorry about where that. they need to be, and what's coming up. 
Unfortunately, Power School has disabled mm. the calendar widget, which would allow you to quickly navigate through Power School to see everything that's coming up at one time. Now you have to individually click each class, but overall, Power School still is an effective way to figure out where your students are, especially since this is the main program that you have access to. Next, you will most see your student use Google Classroom. Google Classroom is kind of like our hotspot, our gathering zone for everything that we'll use as far as academics is concerned with the current remote learning situation. Through Google Classroom, teachers are able to assign work, grade work, return work to students, discuss, have discussions, schedule Google Meets, and anything else they pretty much have their heart set on doing in a classroom setting, it can happen virtually on Google Classroom. We chose Google Classroom because this is the platform that our students are already using. Some teachers were already using Google Classroom prior to the pandemic. Additionally, Google Classroom easily integrates with the Google Suite, which our students use on the regular throughout the academic year here at the middle school. Through Google Classroom, teachers can also schedule Google Meets. They can also make sure that all students have the opportunity to collaborate on various assignments as well. And this happens happens with ease and it's something that our students are used to doing. Something else that you may hear your students talk about is Google Meet. Google Meet is also part of the Google Suite. Google Meet can be scheduled through Google Calendar and also just happen right away. Mostly in advisory, you'll see your students meeting with their advisor and their other advising members to have discussions about whatever they're discussing at that time. A lot of the activities that teachers have planned so far are just to get the kids outside of the norm and able to collaborate and have conversations with their peers. Moving on, you may also see your students using Nearpod. Nearpod is a great tool for giving out information as well as gathering information from students. Nearpod also integrates quite easily with Google Classroom and all of the Google Slide features. So again, we've chosen Nearpod. Also through Nearpod, you can see that, that students may be recording videos to submit. That's Flipgrid. Flipgrid can be used as a part of Nearpod or as a standalone feature where teachers are able to create a discussion post and students can record short videos of themselves giving their answer. This is an excellent way for students who may love being on camera to talk and also for those that just need to a break from the monotony of typing to get on their computer and make a short video. They're able to add stickers and text and they're able to thumbs up their partners and anything else they would like to do to make sure that their information is conveyed quickly, correctly, and with a little flair of their personality. They also see students using Newzella. Newzella is an excellent way for students to continue with their media literacy. Teachers are able to gather articles on different topics, but put them all together, having students work through them to find different sets of information. The best part of Newzella is all of the work that teachers gather and put together for students. It adjusts to where your student is. You may also see your students create more iMovies than they ever have before. Not the TikTok ones, but iMovie videos to submit for a grade. A lot of the students are using iMovie as a way to submit their physical education requirements. They are outside playing and learning and growing and stretching, working up exercise routines and recording themselves doing so to submit as a part of their journals and documentation of some effort to be physically fit. This list is not at all exhaustive, but now you have a better idea of what your students are working on and through on a daily basis. You may also see other apps such as BrainPop and Explain Everything and even Khan Academy make their appearance on a daily basis. All of these are apps and tools that have been created to help make that remote learning experience a lot easier for your student. Please never hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. We're always here to help and have a fantastic day. Oh, thank you so much, Nikki. Um, again, I'm realizing we're realizing that the um, connection is blurry, kind of playing with the YouTube video, putting li live streaming on YouTube. So thank you for your patience on that. And just know that we will post those on the remote learning um, page as well as our parent ed page. Before and we dig into that. Yeah. And if that last video, let's let's still test Donna's in a little bit. But if it's blurry, yeah. we can cut that and talk a little bit more. That's what I was thinking. I was going to say, let's have um, Tamika kind of talk through a little bit about some of the middle school, some of the interesting ways that middle school is using those tools that Nikki um, just discussed. 
And then Joe, you know, if Donna's video doesn't necessarily work, I know you can kind of share kind of the highlights of what that looks like. Um, so I'll pass it over to you, Tamika. Thank you, Shannon. So I just wanted to mention again for parents, um, and as, as Nikki mentioned, she did such a great job with that video. Um, we have the PowerSchool Learning Platform, um, especially designed for parents so that they can log in uh, to see what is required for their students um, for their homework, especially for their um, for what's going on. So parents can use that um, all school. You know, it's designed for them for the entire school year every year. Um, that's what we've been using. Um, our teachers, though, have been um, they use PowerSchool Learning, but they also use Google Classroom. And as Joe mentioned, it's a great tool because uh, teachers are able to assign work, they're also able to grade work through Google Classroom and return that work back to students. So um, it's something that they can use that just, you know, work goes back and forth between a teacher and student. Um, it, it's just a powerful tool. Um, the Google Suite tools that we use, uh, Google Classroom, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Meets is something that our teachers um, have uh, gotten used to using and um, Google Meets is something that we just started using for our live chats and um, especially for advisors, that's what they use to meet with um, their, their students um, so that everyone can meet and see each other at least twice a week. Um, so that's something that has, um, been, that has worked very well for our teachers. Um, so, like I said, Nikki did a great job with that video because there are a lot of tools that our teachers have become familiar with and um, they're very tools. So, for example, our students can um, go from making movies to um, looking at slides on Nearpod. Um, so there are just a variety of tools that our students are using that have been successful for them. Yeah, thanks. It's super interesting seeing all the creative ways that the kids who are digital natives kind of come up with on how to use it for their, mm -hmm. for their learning. Joe, is there anything to add relevant to the kind of middle school piece from your perspective? Well, it's it's one of those pieces where uh, ed tech that my team and I have been working on with our faculty for years. It's nice to see that all that training and all the work that our faculty put into it really kind of being forced to come into fruition. So we've been able to mm -hmm. leverage all that experience so that our, you know, my fifth grader had a assignment in drama class. They're not in drama class and that's probably one of her favorites. So she's been super sad, but she loved making a stop motion video that she shared with Mr. Mize as an assignment, got great feedback for him improved it and turned it around again. So she's, they're getting a little bit more time at home to explore these creation tools. And that's just, that's been a nice add on to this experience, I think. Yeah, absolutely. The problem solving, some of those skills that we know will last a lifetime, we're taking full advantage of. Um, so we're gonna switch over to Donna. I actually downloaded it. So we're gonna try something a little different, see if this works. Um, let's see here, we'll give her, Go ahead. Hello, I'm going to show examples Hello, from my, my fellow name is Donna teachers and Patrick, my own class and I am the upper to demonstrate how we're interacting with students and, and monitoring their progress in our remote day. learning environment. In this video, I'm going to show examples from my fellow teachers and my own class to demonstrate how we're so interacting with students and monitoring learning. their progress in our in remote our learning remote environment using PowerSchool Learning, teachers can Office 365, and other tech tools. So let's start with PowerSchool Learning. On this in our current portal, remote learning environment, weekly agenda, teachers continue to complete with post dates, assignments to power any school recent learning. activity. You can and see announcements on this made for portal, him or the whole school. Their weekly agenda. When we look with due dates, at a teacher's class, any recent we'll activity, see information about and distance announcements learning, made for him links, or the whole and school. videos as well. If when a student we look clicks on the calendar class, for that specific class, we'll see information about they distance will see learning, all the assignments, perhaps due links and videos as well. Month. If a Some student clicks on the calendar students to that submit specific class online through PowerSchool, they will see all the assignments. If that is the case, the student would simply click month. on the assignment Some and follow teachers the prompts are requiring to upload students their work. To submit work In online addition to PowerSchool Power Learning, if that many is the teachers case, are the using the OneNote on class the assignment notebook and follow the prompts to upload. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm hearing some. Um, feedback that we're hearing it twice. So um, thanks, Nikki. 
I am going to, we'll go back to the stream here. And let's show this one solo. And I think it might be blurry. But we will try for you about. You can see on this student's portal their weekly agenda, mm -hmm. complete with due dates, any recent activity, and announcements made for him or the whole school. So what do you think, Joe? Do you want to just take it? I'm, I'm happy to talk through. I'm going to say I will not do as good a job as Donna, but you can watch that video in our link after this. So Donna is really going to be talking through how much more autonomous our upper schoolers are. It's a part of being a big kid at Country Day. They do use Power School as well for the listing of assignments, but Instead of the Google tool set at the middle school, we rely on the Microsoft Office 365, which is really all of the Microsoft Office tools, Word, Excel, PowerPoint that we're familiar with up in the cloud with Microsoft. So our students have uh, Windows Surface tablets and on those tablets are the Microsoft apps. What we use at the upper school uh, is a tool called OneNote Class Notebook. Essentially, it is a two-way tool set where the students can have their resources and their notes in the surface, and they can get assignments, quizzes, and other work from the teachers. As an upper school teacher, I teach a senior elective in the IB program. I've made, really, I rely on OneNote as a part of my class delivery. When we moved to remote learning, I still had my OneNote class notebook up, but I added in a product called Microsoft Teams, which was used by some of our teachers, but I had not used at school, as many of our other faculty had not used it. Because it is a part of Office 365, it was really easy to implement, and it essentially, uh, some uh, parents that are listening might be familiar with the product Slack. It's a corporate communication tool. Uh, Teams is Microsoft's version of Slack, and it allows video conferencing, text, sharing of resources, easier collaboration of documents, and it partners really well with the other Microsoft tools, including Office 365. So I know much like Meets, Google Meets at the middle school is being used for advisory and for class time, I'm using uh, Microsoft Teams to meet with my students for office hours. I know my uh, ninth grade daughter has used uh, Microsoft Teams for her class advisory. And really, it, it enables that direct face contact and the interaction similar to what we have with our view here. We've all gotten used to doing conferences like this or perhaps Zooming or using WebEx at work. Teams gives us that functionality in a safe space at Country Day. It's only open to folks that are in our Country Day uh, environment, students with Country Day email addresses. And it's just, it's been really beneficial. I've had students checking in. I've one student who checks in every office hour. I think uh, he might need the, uh, the connection a little bit more than he needs help with coursework. But it's just, it's been really neat to see my students connecting with each other on these tools. I use it to post, uh, I'll have an, ar an article or a case study for discussion, and then the students will respond to the article and to each other in that environment. I'm able to see the work, see who's doing what, provide feedback, offer grades. It's just, it's been really neat. So Donna will go into those in, in more depth in the video, and folks can see how their students are using it. How's Great. that? Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think um, the kind of working with the technology that you all are seeing here live is part of it. It's part of what we're kind of teaching our students. And we, kind of, we have to take the problem that we have and do our best and know that we always have backup plans. So um, again, know that you can go to the remote learning website uh, as, a, as well as our parent uh, ed website for if you need some of these videos and tips and tricks for the tools that are, your kids are using. Um, and the most important thing that we wanted to make sure that you knew is the thoughtfulness behind the tools um, for our teaching and learning, and also that we are here with you and for you with all the questions. So whether you're here live with us or you're watching this later, please know that you can email or reach out to your classroom teacher or your advisor, and they will get you the help that you need, especially relevant to the technology. We're, like I said, in it together. Um, 
I think the last thing, I don't see any um, big questions coming up through the public chat. So again, if there's any specific question that you have, um, even if it was brought up, know that you know our team is on chat with you or for Tamika or Joe, we're happy to answer. Um, but I like to end all of our leadership lives with a little bit of a, a personal kind of question. We're all kind of humans here beyond just our, our role at school. So I wanted to ask both you, Tamika and Joe, can you share with us a funny story relevant to your own experience about learning new digital tools? Um, Joe, why don't you give it a, a start? Sure. Um, and Shannon queued us up so we got to think about this a little bit. And I think the funniest thing for my students or my kids to hear is that I never used email until my first year of college. So after I got out of the Navy, uh, I was at Syracuse and I had to petition to get an email. I had a bunch of friends in the engineering program and they were telling me what a cool thing email was. Uh, so I signed up. I got an email account and I didn't have anybody to write an email to because nobody I knew had email. And that's just uh, showing my age a little bit, but also kind of funny. And then I think the thing for all parents that I would toss out on PowerSchool, again, that point that if you, um, I can get a little bit overloaded myself looking at the PowerSchool interface. I've got my class, my assignments, my ninth grader, my fifth grader, and other announcements from the divisions. It can be a little bit overwhelming. Remember that it's pretty easy to go in and filter that view so that you only see what you're looking for. Absolutely. Thanks. And now, uh, what about you, Tamika? Any funny stories? So I, I don't know if, if teachers will actually remember these things, but um, the school that I worked at prior to country day did not have any document cameras. Joe, do you remember document cameras? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, well, it actually had one document camera. So I, I was looking for it. I wanted to be the first one to use the document camera. And it was actually in a closet um, hidden like way back in the library. And the document camera was, was larger than the cart that I actually had to place it on and everyone at the middle school knows that we have these neat compact tiny document cameras so um, i was the first person to use this huge giant document camera that was larger than the cart i had to place it on so um, that i have many technology stories but um I, that's the one i chose this year <laughs> Thanks. I, I think it's important for all of us to know that, you know, it's okay to kind of mess up and figure it out. Um, even um, some of the tech gurus kind of go through that. Um, so again, thank you, Joe and Tamika for being part of this today. And Tim, Nikki and Donna for being with us on chat. Um, I know uh, everyone is super appreciative of your support throughout and thank you in advance for answering all of our questions um, as they come your way after this video is published. Um, so I also wanted to kind of give a little promotion for our future leadership live we, tomorrow at 2 p.m. We have Katie L. Sasser, our Director of College Counseling, is going to be joined by Chris Gruber, the VP and Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid at Davidson College. And they're going to be talking about all things college counseling related to this pandemic. Um, we prepped earlier this week and it's super interesting. So please tune in and you can ask questions to Katie and Chris um, directly as well. And then just like Joe mentioned earlier on Monday, Joe is going to be back with us with Scott Waybright and talking about our remote learning plan, kind of where we've come and where we're going. So that'll be an opportunity for parents to really ask questions as well um, and to get an inside look on that. Um, again, thank you so much. Remember to check our social media sites often and our coronavirus preparedness website and our parent ed websites on BucksNet. You can ask us questions anytime. And we hope this, these leadership live sessions are a little bit of a little way that we can create connection in this kind of crazy world. But um, we hope everyone st stays safe, be well, and go Bucks. Bye, guys. Thank you.